Namaste everyone and welcome back to Live Stronger. Today we are going to work on our shoulder muscles and a bit of triceps, calves as usual, tiny bit of forearms too. Straight away I'm going to start off with the greatest stretch, 5 repetitions on each side as usual every day. I think I can just now put a prompt there, just the greatest stretch. I do it regularly, so just put a prompt there. But yes, if you're joining me recently or if you've joined me recently, Make sure that you do this particular stretch in the beginning of your workout just to unlock the mobility. It's a great way to unlock mobility. You can do multiple other dynamic stretches too if you're interested and if you have time to spend spare 5 minutes for the dynamic stretches. This hardly takes a couple of minutes and unlocks your entire body's mobility since it stretches all of the muscles equally. Now post doing this we also will do the mandatory deep squat for the day. So just hinge forward by pushing your glutes as far behind as possible once you feel your hamstrings completely stretched start bending your knees and then slowly dip into a deep squat the stance take a comfortable stance so that you can open your hips as much as possible to go into the deep squat hold there for 5 to 10 seconds and that's more than sufficient for today's workout we are going to do a little bit of bear crawls just to ensure we get enough compression in our shoulders going, activate our posterior chain and also, you know, push blood into our delts. Get ready for all the exercises which we are going to do for our shoulders. Just do 10 repetitions of these and it's absolutely fine. You can also do other mobility drills which I have done earlier, stability drills, if you want, if you feel any kind of shoulder instability. Straight away, I'm going to start my first exercise with ray delt fly flies. As usual, I'm going to do one hand at a time because while using both my arms, I always feel that one of my arm is overworking and one of my arm is underworking. It keeps switching in between or I don't feel an optimum pump in one side. So I prefer doing it one arm at a time. It helps me focus a lot more. Doesn't necessarily take much of a time because again, if we are doing one arm at a time, I usually cut down the amount of rest in between the sets. So instead of taking 60 seconds of rest, I just take 45 to 30 seconds rest because while one arm is working, the other arm is at complete rest. Make sure you get this 12 repetitions. Now when it comes to ray delt flies, you can do this particular exercise on a cable machine too. It's just that you need to figure out the right height to cause contractions in your ray delt. Remember your ray delt is a little bit... Uh, small in size in comparison to your friend delt and your side delts and also the muscles are really small and have small amount of contraction available so they don't need much of much range of movement but they need the right angle so position yourself properly every individual is different there is no perfect position when it comes to the placement of the hands as you can see initially when i started i used to hold the bar a little bit higher but then i figured out Holding the bar a little bit lower gives me a better activation for my ray delt. So please do use at least one set to get the optimum range or the optimum pump. Now you should start feeling a slight bit of pinching or you know the tightness happening just behind your armpits, just behind your uh, shoulder and that's how you know that you're working your ray delt. Go as slow as possible, feel the weight. I also prefer not to rest the weight ever, making sure the weight always stays in the air so the tension is always there on my ray delt. You might feel one arm more than the other arm and that's absolutely fine. It's just a slight difference of mind muscle connection so you need not worry about it much post this ray delt flies i moved on to work on my calf muscles so i started off with donkey calf races again we are following the principle of holding for four seconds at the con highest contraction point and at the stretch point why because I've realized getting more repetitions did get me good amount of work done on my calf muscles but the moment I started holding off it gave me more blood flow and more contraction in my calves. 
One of the cues which you have to keep in mind is to make sure you lock out your knees absolutely straight. This ensures that there is no play area for the calf muscles to loosen or there is no energy leak as such. The moment you contract or push yourself up, your calves are completely tight and the moment you drop down your heels, your calves are at a complete stretch. If you bend your knee, you're leaving a little bit of play, your calves will get a little bit of space to move around. So you might not get the maximum output of every repetition. Four seconds hold, just count. You know, you need not have a stopwatch in front of you. Just count one, two, three, four, and then drop down. You would be able to get around 12 to 15 repetitions. 15 repetitions is the target range. So try to get there. Now you can definitely load this weight, a uh, particular exercise with weight by placing a bar on your back or asking someone to hold a weight on your back. I prefer to do it just with my body weight. Maybe in future, I will definitely show you how to load it using a Smith machine. Post this exercise, I move on to work on my friend delts. So for my friend delts, I'm going to use the cable setup here again. Palms facing up and I raise the cables up to my eye level for every repetition. When my arms go back, the cable is still under ten uh, tension. I never let the weights drop completely. Constant tension on my friend delt. There will be a little bit activation of your bicep and your upper chest. Very minute, you might feel it a little bit, but it's absolutely fine because of the way your friend delts are connected to your biceps and your chest. You might feel a little bit of contraction there, but majority of the work will be done by your friend delts. Make sure you go through the repetitions as slow as possible and hold the weight, especially when you're trying, when you're going down the eccentric moment, when you're letting the weights go down back again, try to control the weight as much as possible, creating that stretch. I have done four sets of these. 12 repetitions with a minutes, minute break in between. Since it's an equipment based exercise, you need not change much. And the, uh, since the tension is constant, you might also start feeling uh, tightness and soreness a lot more. That's absolutely fine. It might feel a little bit different than doing with a regular dumbbell or a barbell because there's constant pull on your front delts. If you feel there is a little bit more tightness, feel free to take a much longer break. But it is important to make sure that you raise your arms up to your eye level. Don't just stop at your shoulder level. Your shoulder has a lot more contraction room as you try to raise them up and let the cables go as far behind as possible to create a stretch with every repetition on your friend delt. Take a way which is challenging, but don't overload it to an extent where you're unable to get any reps out of it. Here on my last set, I failed just near eight repetition. So I rest pause technique. I used the rest pause technique wherein I rested for 10 seconds and then completed my two repetitions, which was still quite challenging. I did progressive overload by increasing the weight by just one increment, but you can prefer to stick to the same weight. For the next exercise, I'm going to work on my triceps. So for my triceps, I'm going to do the rope push downs, just standing straight and pushing the rope down. The starting position of this particular exercise need to be with your elbows at 90 degrees. You need not keep your elbows up or let them go completely up. Just start at 90 degrees. The most important motion is to push your wrist out. Get that maximum extension of your elbows. So that your tricep is contracted to the maximum level. Make sure every repetition is felt. Yes, there might be some situations where you might feel one arm more than the other because this is a uh, rope push down and you're holding the rope with both your hands. At times, one of the arms might push a little bit harder than the other one. That's absolutely fine. Try to readjust and just keep pushing and get those 12 repetitions. The rest in between, 
60 seconds is more than sufficient by now your arm should start feeling full because after completing four sets the fifth set would feel a little bit tough but yes keep going for the 12 repetitions make sure you don't use your shoulders your trap muscles and your chest to push the weight down stand as straight as possible and then push the weight down for my next exercise i am going to do a new variation of lateral raises here i am using the cable setup i simply grabbed the cables across my body behind so i'm holding the left cable in my right hand and the right cable in my left hand and from there i'm performing the lateral raises the benefit of it again since it's a cable based exercise the cable is constantly pulling on my delt so there's constant tension i won't get i mean i'm not relieved of the gravity being zero when the dumbbells are at straight point on my delts with cables there's constant pull so constant tension more work can be done by third and fourth set your shoulders must be feeling really heavy mine definitely did so it's absolutely fine to take a longer break more than 60 seconds if you feel tired at this moment of time so for our next exercise i'm going to move on to the vertical hangs i'll try to go hang as long as possible remember 100 seconds target post workout will remain as usual i'm still getting those 60 plus odd seconds only it's mostly my calluses which give make me give up but yes i'll keep trying to hold on for longer as much as possible and once you're done with this we move on to our core work here we go on to our oblique twists basically just hold on to a pvc pipe behind your head and start twisting around try to get at least 25 rotations on each side while doing this particular exercise make sure you brace your core contract it as much as possible to feel the twist if you leave your core loose you might not feel the contractions happening much in your obliques it might shift into your hips and it would be just a whole body rotation if you brace your core and lock your hips you will feel it a lot more on your obliques and once done we move on to our decompression for decompression it's pretty simple remember we have done the vertical hang vertical hang is an excellent decompression exercise also for our shoulders because we are hanging with all our body weight just pulling down on our shoulders for the final decompression i'm just using these circles on the floor just lean forward and draw circles on the floor without touching the floor but trying to touch the floor creating that you know pseudo effect of your ball separating from the socket joint two sets of this 10 circles is more than sufficient to decompress your shoulder thank you so much for joining me if you did like this video please drop a like if you haven't subscribed to the channel i would appreciate a sub to the channel and any feedback truly appreciate it please drop it down in the comment section i hope you had a wonderful workout uh, so on that note thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video where we train our pull strength again thank you